Good evening, everyone. I am Lakshman. We welcome you all on behalf of Azure, Azure Microsoft Azure User Group, Chennai. Our today's session is about Azure Overview, kickstarting your data governance journey by Vivek Raja, who is a data scientist, organizer at the Azure Developers Community, and a Guinness record holder for. largest code debugging bug fixing competition in with 613 people in 2nd of december 2021 so i welcome you vivek raja hi hi lakshman hi vivek thanks for a wonderful and i appreciate your time and you are and you sharing your thoughts with our developers community on azure chennai and i welcome you for this great evening yep thank you i am very much happy to be here thank you for that sure and uh, the stage is yours and it's your session so you can kick start okay perfect yep thank you lakshman so, so hello everyone. hello everyone so welcome to today's session so it's about azure purview your unified data governance service So I'm your uh, speaker Vivek Raja. I'm working as data scientist at Nextem. So uh, can you please share my screen as well? Okay. Sure. Yep. So today's topic is Azure Purview, and I am Vivek. So what we're actually going to see in today's talk is we are going to see what is Azure Purview and how does it going to help your enterprise. So that really uh, helps you to understand how you can manage your on-premise, multi-cloud, your software as a service data. and also how you can actually mine and maximize the value of the data and get insights out of it and also we will see how to implement implement and customize your azure purview so uh, as for today's session the prerequisites is a zero uh, it's completely beginner friendly and if you have some some uh, uh, good knowledge about basic cloud or azure that's well and good but if you are person who is from a developer point of view or an architect or a or someone who is working as data analyst data scientist then this session might be really helpful for you to upgrade your infrastructure so what are the key takeaways of today's session will be is uh, in this session we will learn how we can use purview and we will also understand what's the best practices which is involved and we'll also see how to set custom classification rules and to classify your data we'll try to apply some sensitivity labels and also we'll just go walk through the entire purview in 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 general so before going into the session a little about me again so i am working as data scientist at nextem so we are a brain computing interfacing uh, hardware and software solution company and uh, you can check out our company at nextem.ai so i'm a guinness world record holder from 2021 and i'm also aws machine learning hero you can check out my profile at hero section in aws and uh, my uh, core expertise actually lies in two things one is ai and uh, cloud so you can talk about me for regarding any cloud which includes both azure and aws and i like to talk about more regarding machine learning implementation in both i also organizer at uh, aws is a group and azure developer communities i'm 16 times multi cloud certified so from oracle azure and aws and alibaba cloud i'm a 20 times international and national level hackathon winner so this uh, came up with an interest during my college days where i loved to participate in hackathons developing new solutions and stuff so i met up participated in around 60 to 70 hackathons and i won around 20 plus hackathons in that so besides that my research uh, uh, academics and research goes into machine learning ai and everything so i have published around 5 plus research papers i also filed for a patent which is under evaluation right now and besides i have a very good love for the community i am a very active speaker in both aws and azure and machine learning uh, uh, domains and user groups and i'm also a mentor blogger and an open source contributor in in the same field you can check out my blogs at dev.2 and medium as well so with that being said uh, you can connect with me at @vivekraja007 in twitter so i do love posting a lot about uh, the current updates in cloud machine learning ai and also the events which i host and speak as well so now that let's dive into the session so this session is about uh, three things i'll be only talking about what is data and 
why data so data and data is the first topic and we will see why is data governance and then we will dive into azure purview and we will see about all the necessary stuff that's necessary for today's session and also of course that includes a demo as well so let's get started so this is one of the prominent uh, uh, key statements you are been hearing a lot in nowadays so which is data is the new oil why do they say that so let's just look around your uh, the current workspace or from your home where you are sitting. Is there any electronics which does not generate data? Or is there any device that does not capture or analyze or transform the data which you have? So I have a mobile phone right now besides me. I have an Alexa uh, besides me right now. So which is actually consuming a lot of data from time to time. So data is actually driving all your companies and business needs as well as your strategic decisions as well so that's a key point and that's a new oil in in this current century so with that being said we understood what's the importance of data we have now let's understood the the volume and the uh, the associated quantities of the data so how big is big so in the sense i want to say how data is actually uh, is big and how much it's generating in, in daily uh, scenarios. So around 90% of, I think these two statements very well define how data is important. So which means 90% of corporate strategies will cite information as a critical asset by 2022. This was released by Gartner. And also the expected value of data generated annually will reach around 175 zeta bytes by 2025. So this is an annual count, not the total volume. So the, velo the volume and the velocity is increasing at an enormous pace. So to keep up with your infrastructure and, and, and a way to actually maintain your complete uh, data infrastructures and pipeline, there is there are a few things that we need to do. So that's where your, uh, we'll see about this in today's session. So this raises a couple of questions. So data is everywhere. We understood how big is the data and how important is the data. So data is everywhere, but how do you really manage it? So that's one question. And second one is, even though you, if you know how to manage your data, but how do you really understand what's insights your data is coming from? So that's second thing. And third thing, yes, of course, like if you need to actually understand or get insights from the data, then you have to transform and manipulate data from it. So there should be some ways and strategies and some uh, operations and transformations that needs to be done. So with that being said, that's that's one thing. But the main important aspect is how do you actually keep your data free, uh, secure, and also free from other stuff, uh, which includes sensitivity and maintaining some privacy as well and transparency, of course. So how do you actually manage all these stuff in an enterprise? So imagine if you're a SaaS company and you will be generating a lot of data on daily basis. So there should be some platform or a tool that should make our lives a bit easier. So that's where we get introduced to a new term called data governance. So uh, let's just put data governance into two different categories, which I, which I feel so. So as the name suggests, data governance. So governance in the sense, you have to manage and govern the data, whatever you generate and whatever you own it, so, right? So, or which is submitted to you as well. So that can be broadly done in two categories. One is discovery and one is compliance. So discovery is like what data actually we are consuming. So where is the data and which types of data actually I wanted to look into and how do I really get the data to my hands? So this answers the questions of how do you actually discover your data in your from your data sources and that your data sources can be anything and it can be in any format for example let's take some quick quick uh, understanding of it suppose you are some uh, uh, a company who is working in some finance domain so which includes let's assume like you are working in or you are creating a product which is similar to paytm or some some uh, uh, digital payment apps so in the sense you generate a lot of data on daily basis where you try to, a uh, uh, lot of people try to make some transactions and the transaction includes very, very critical and sensitive data, which includes the bank accounts of getting transferred and so on. So, and you have to ensure that the data is maintained properly and there is no loss of data or loss of information that might lead to a big trouble. So that's where the governance comes in the picture. 
this is not only applicable for any finance or or uh, 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 a, a finance domain or saas product it can be applicable to any business or any enterprise that you work for of course because every data every business runs with data as one of their assets so definitely this comes into the picture so now that we being said that we know how to discover the data and what type of data is there and how do we actually get the data in place now comes the second question how do we actually keep ourselves in compliance with data governance rules so which is in the sense how much data do you really expose or to your end clients or to your other parties or your other b2p companies and with respect to the concern from the user as well and how much risk of you having the data being lost or manipulated or misinformed or doing anything and of course you have to when you you deal with a lot of data and a data is coming from your several users or several devices or whatever there should be some regulatory concerns and and uh, feedbacks that needs to keep your data in place and in accessing in a right way so that's regulation and of course coming to the access and it's not really a uh, a uh, wise choice to allow everyone to get hands on your data right correct so so as an enterprise as as someone who is in responsible to to maintain your data in your enterprise you have to maintain some hierarchy of powers or uh, access levels so that everyone gets access to the data which they really want but not exposed to the other data in the organization that ensures the security in, in most of the aspects so now that we understood that the data governance not only an, uh, lies in discovery of where the data is coming from but it's also the responsibility of the enterprise or the person who is working in an enterprise or a company or even a business or to keep it compliant with the data policies as well so now that we spoke a lot about what is really happening on the data governance part let's try to understand like who really gets to work on the data so it's not just your uh, 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 data governance is handled by your data engineer or your or someone it's actually interdisciplinary so what i mean by inter- interdisciplinary in the sense uh, an enterprise might have a lot of lot of uh, sub domains and teams and working in it it can be your sales it can be your marketing it can be your developers it can be your data engineering team it can be your data scientist team or in the, in the total it can be also your c level people as well so uh, with that being said there is actually a new role which is being generated which is chief data officer that is role is transforming the enterprises in very recent times this person is actually responsible to keep to maintain your data and also to unify and to make sure that our data whatever we access in the enterprise does comply with all the necessary access rules so uh, a, da- a chief data officer it can be your machine learning team as myself who is a data scientist who would like to work with data but i don't really need to know about most of the data in the sense so that's one thing and data engineers who would really like to write the pipelines and and decide on where your data should to reside on how it should be accessed and everything and your developers who develop applications based on the data where it appears and and also uh, make the last connectivity to your applications to get it visualized and your marketing and sales team do really need some insights to make some strategic decisions as well so data governance does not pertain to a single person or a single role it's a responsibility of the complete enterprises and the teams which work with it so that's why we call data governance is interdisciplinary so we understood like why we like at first we understood there is a huge volume of explosion of data which is happening in a in a in a, a business field or in a company then we understood like if there is a huge explosion of data there should be a regulatory body called data governance and we understood okay there is a two points which we need to consider which is uh, discovery and the compliance of it so with that being said we also discovered like it's the data governance it's just not one person's responsibility it's the whole mindset with the people who is working in enterprise to make sure that the data is available to everyone but in a safe and secure manner so we just saw okay so you told me like vivek you told me like uh, you need to keep the data secure and so on so but how do you really achieve it so that comes to the next part of your slide so we can broadly put that into four things so overlooking the data so which i say like the explosion of data in the sense so uh, it can be uh, let's assume if you are working in an iot based solution product so a hardware which collects or streams the data 
So there can be n number of IoT devices in your users' hands, and they can be uh, simultaneously streaming a lot of data to it. And there should be a way to actually collect your data and maintain it so that you get to access that as well. And second thing is data growth is exponential, so it's not linear. You cannot assume like okay, if there is two persons, I'll get this much of data, and if it's three. It's this much of data. It's definitely not. It's definitely exponential. With no number of users or the more number of accessibility of data, that increases the complexity and the data growth as well. And now this comes to the entire、uh, key takeaway of your entire session, or or how we can say is this is actually what Azure Purview really means. So a lot of data is being generated, and you know there are several teams working on it, right? So, which is your sales and marketing team, your developer, and your data scientist team. But do they have really a single view of access of data? Let's try to think back, take take a minute and think back on that. You have two teams in your in your company, and let's assume like that's your data scientist team and your、uh, marketing team.、Uh, you have a, a user related data and some some data which will help you to increase your Your、uh, business value, which is your what your data scientist team is working on. So, do、uh, what actions do you take? Do you really take two copies of data and give each one of them so that they work on their own versions of data, or should you ensure that you have a single view of data so that whatever changes that one team makes does let the other team know that this is what happening and vice versa, or what should be the right way of doing it? So, a single view of data. Is actually necessary for an organization, though you can have versions of data, but it necessarily need to have that. Okay, these are the data which our organization has, and this is where the data is coming from, and this is have the transformations or something which I have to do on this particular data. So that represents a single view of data, and that means a same copy of data exists across all your organization. So that actually points to a second point. So, which is overcoming operation silos, which I was actually talking about exactly right now. So, if you have two different teams working on a, 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 a copy of data, so it should be not versioning or a separate copy. It it should be a single point of copy, and only when they access the data, you should ensure that there there is consistency in the data as well, and agility in the data ecosystem. So.、Uh, Now that you understood, like the data is very, very、uh, fast changing, and it is subject to a lot of changes in 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 a minute's time. So in even less than that. So with that being said, how do you really manage that to ensure that whatever changes in the data does reflect in your unified view? So if I delete a data source, what really happens? Or if I transform a single column in an SQL table somewhere lying across your US data center, how do you really know it? So That's where the agility of in the data center comes into picture, and second thing is、uh, complying with the industry regulations. So it, it comes under the regular GDPR, CCPA、uh, regulations, where you have to ensure that your data is compliant so that you meet the industry standards. So this is how you will try to achieve your data governance. So we understood the need of why we need to have a data data governance, and how do we really achieve the data governance? So. These all points to one single place, and that's a question which might be arising in your uh, current uh, mind as well. So, how do I do it? So, that's where your Azure Purview comes into picture. So, Azure Purview is an unified data governance where you try to govern all your enterprise data, organization data, which can be from your on-premise, it can be from your cloud or anything, in a single cloud service. So, Azure Purview is nothing but a cloud service provided by Azure, right? So. How do you actually maintain the entire、uh, ecosystem of data in a single view? And it also helps you to understand and manage your data. Understand in the sense how many data sources you have, and how would transformation it has gone under, and what are the insights it has, and how do you actually manage the data connectors and so on and so. So that、uh, gives you the understanding and management of data. And second, third one is maximizing the business value. Once you have the junk of data in your Azure Purview, let's assume like you have. Take all your uh, uh, data and you make sure that you have、uh, put it in your Azure Purview. You have the complete view. But what next? So that's where you try to do one thing, which is take out the business value or make some business insights from that. So maximizing a business value really helps. Uh, uh, you need some strategies or transformations or some help to to get some insights out of the data. 
or else it's really data as data it's nothing important so you try to convert uh, data into information and information to insights and this transformation actually helped by azure purview as well so once you have some insights you have some strategic decisions which can be taken on that so i think we spoke a lot lot about what is data and we understood like why we have uh, uh, if there is data there should be a data governance uh, in the picture and then we understood like uh, okay now we know that there is data governance which is required and how do we really achieve it then once everything pointed out to us uh, looking into azure purview which helps us to do the same so what can i actually put azure under into one single line so if you are a person who watches uh, uh, the tv shows i think even the logo you might have had some similarity so it looks like the big boss uh, eye so i think uh, people are much more uh, familiar with that as well i guess so so uh, azure purview has a similar logo that of what does a big boss has and if you relate to the same ideology over here so in the sense everything is monitored and you have everything under one view so that's what you happens in a big boss or some reality shows but they're not really much more familiar but i guess that's the gist of it so that's what the azure purview really does so let's try to understand like what components that an azure purview has and what to really do with it so the first thing is you need to get the data inside your cloud so that's where that's the component which is responsible is to automate and to find the data sources and effectively uh, understood that there is data which is existing in some place and i have access to it so that's a data map and that's an underlying for your other components in your azure purview which is catalog and insights so catalog actually uh, uh, gets drilled down to your data and gets a hands on it so it can access your data and stuff and data insights is where you collect the data from it and try to do some transformation and get the insights of the data and data producers and consumers is where once your data is available you have to export or you have to access it somewhere from your application or it can be your business team working on a power bi or anything so that's where your producers and consumers like synapse analytics or power bi comes into the picture so our session will now move in a track where we will try to understand like why these components exist and what are the features that this component has and then once we are familiar with our azure purview we are good to go to experiment and create a, a demo on that same as well okay i'm not sure why there was a blank side but anyway good so understanding the components of azure purview so we can broadly put that into five components as we saw about which is data map so a data map is a graph or technical semantic and business and metadata and more so it knows where your data exists and what type of data it exists and what are the data types and what really it has so these sort of all the metadata information is collected by data map and second one is data catalog so which is uh, uh, which automates the process of discovery so that is responsible to browse and search the information in the data uh, access the data in the first place and then uh, create some uh, meaningful insights with the data insights so you try to access the data you understand how the data is distributed and how your data is performing in your enterprise and you try to gain some insights out of it and data producers and consumers uh, producers are the which a data map really tries to connect to so they are called a data connectors it can be any data source like on prem it can be your saas products or it can be your cloud related data it need not be in your azure service uh, alone it can be even your other cloud like aws s3 and so on so and data consumers can be uh, any data platforms which includes azure as well so as we saw about which is power bi and so on so so as i said like azure purview in my perspective is the big boss so it has the overview from the root to the highest level it participates in all data cycle right from your root level and all the transformation it goes through until it reaches your user or vice versa and and can be accessed from your data to the final data insights and not only it does have access but it do have access to the insights and make some uh, intelligent uh, mappings and uh, insights from the data to make sure that these transformations can be applied and effectively maintained and access to it so 
now we fairly understood like okay so we have an azure purview which is a service to maintain your data governance service and tries to maintain your data and these are the components that the azure purview has which is data map you collect you collect the metadata of the data in in catalog and uh, insights you try to access it and get the insights and your producers and consumers are the application level uh, services which tries to collect the data and work on it so let's try to go into one single components one by one and try to understand what they really do in this complete ecosystem the first one is uh, purview data map and uh, and if you have any questions uh, please do drop in the chat box i would like to take some questions at the end or even in between and it can be uh, any questions related to azure azure purview as well so it's totally fine uh, so azure data map so azure data map is where it lies across your complete data landscape in your organization so this is the complete foundation of any data governance project so what it really does so it has an automated discovery so in the sense uh, what are the new uh, data points or data sources available and how do you actually get the data from it it tries to classify and has some extractions available and it includes the technical semantic business and crowd metadata a complete understanding of the data but it does not uh, try to understand it only has the metadata and how the data is there but it really does not have the access to the data and the second thing is the entity definition for the industry model so it tries to have the standard Uh, uh which needs to be maintained for your data so that it meets to industrial requirements and it's a platform for your purview applications as well so this is the foundation of your complete uh, uh data governance project so it it is has some extensible model and open apis uh with apache atlas so and uh, uh the purview is as a service which is actually built upon apache atlas if you are familiar with it so it's an open source and that maintains your metadata and insights so this service is actually built upon that and it is an extensible model and still it can work with all the apache atlas related apis along with that so there are more than 100 data connectors in which you can get your data from more than 100 data sources at any given point and there are 47 sources for your data and every single data which is which is mentioned by azure it's actually gprc and ccpa compliant which means they are defined as what we call as system types in uh, apache atlas so when you actually use these 48 data sources we can ensure that this actually meets your data standards and compliance but let's assume like you have some custom uh, uh, your own data source or uh, which needs to be actually brought to cloud uh then you look out for azure purview and you decide to use it and uh, let's assume i have on prem so what do you actually have to do to make sure that it it gets uh sync with uh, the atlas or something so that's why you try to create a something called custom type so all your uh, uh system type refers to what azure has created and your custom type refers to uh the source which you you define for it and you can actually use the same apis what you use for apache atlas and you can bring your data to the cloud so that's one 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 of the important aspects of data map i think we need to really uh, look into with that being said let's move to the second component which is data catalog so it is responsible of few of the stuff which includes automated data discovery so in the sense uh, we try to understand where the actual data is and and also uh, try to access the data and establish uh, uh, something to get get access to the data and data classification and labeling once you have an access to the actual data you can classify and label based on the data values and configuration and management as well so let's try to understand one each by each so automated data discovery so this is sort of an hybrid data scanning which you can do in your on prem as well as your cloud uh, which scans your all your data sources and then updates with the new newest data which has and also applies some classification rules and services to immediately classify the data based upon the the basic set of default classification rules or you can bring your own classification rules as well and second one is integration runtime i think this is one of, one of the important thing we need to have a look into it so uh, in serverless in a uh, uh, in cloud it's completely managed by your azure with scalable uh, uh, auto scaling features and stuff is completely serverless in cloud but in in 
in your on prem you have to install some agents which is like a self hosted integration runtime agent to bring your data to your azure purview or to connect it and also it really works with a range of data and it can support actually a, a, a network topographies it can actually access all the vnets and also on prem as well so azure purview actually has 23 points of presence over covering in 12 geographies so i'll think there is one interesting point which comes to this particular uh, uh point which i actually noticed which is uh so which is uh, why do i actually mention that there is 23 points of presence covering 12 geographies let's assume uh, your azure purview is actually hosted in central us and you have a data source which is existing in india so let's assume that in your central india region Uh, you want to access your data so your your uh, a data map actually knows that there is a service which is existing in central india and this type of data is what really exists over there let's assume like it's an sql server so now that you want to really access the data that's where your catalog comes into the picture you get a hands and try to have the data in picture but what is the latency that you have to incur to get an access from the data from your central us region to your central india region so to prevent actually azure purview is pretty much intelligent on this aspect so it does not really have a complete access from region wise to region but what it really does is it spins up a, a, a region or a purview service to extract or to access the data in central india gets a complete access of the data then it pushes to your azure purview organization and it actually dissolves the the service which which was uh temporarily created so azure purview is, is intelligent enough to handle these sort of uh, really uh, re- uh, region and your uh, uh, network topography as well so as we said like uh, data map only has a metadata and it's only your data is accessed from your data uh, uh, catalog so which is by your classification or other operators so other operators can be actually called as labeling and lineage extractions and so on so the discovery never actually accesses the real data it's the operators which access the data and as i said like the purview takes care of region wise classification operators and can auto scale which is exactly which i was talking about right now and it has around 200 plus data classifiers across personal government and etc i i don't think so uh, uh, it will be much more better if we can look into the classifiers when we have a demo and you can also create your own classifier so classifier is where you establish a classification rule and when there is an incoming of data you try to classify your data and put into right right pictures or right categories and you can establish your own custom classification rules and also we can label your sensitive data so this is what your azure uh, uh, data catalog uh, helps you to so now we understood like data map knows the metadata data catalog has some operators like classification and and uh, uh, sensitivity which actually accesses the data and does some initial transformation and time. so what does actually data insights do so it tries to understand the asset distribution across your whole organization and your region and your teams and everything it has some logical connection how your data is and should be grouped within your your organization and analysis of business glossary terms so it can actually have its own glossary terms from your own uh, data points which you have so in the sense you can uh, uh, for example if your enterprise has some new business term uh, that needs to be incorporated in your whole uh, data platforms then you can create your glossary term and a set of uh, rules to associate or to identify that once you've done it your uh, azure purview takes care of identifying that particular glossary across your entire data landscape so it's it is that uh, uh, very insightful to get it and sensitive data classification it tries to uh, uh, assign or uh, classify the data in uh, which is has some sensitive information like it can be your name or your personal details or your financial details like credit card and so on so and make sure that that is maintained and classified so it meets with your obviously your compliance issues and the second one is the data movements across data assets in your data map so assume like you move or merge or you separate data in your in your particular data sources that needs to be identified and mapped along with as well and the other thing is like geographic movement where you can move your data from one region to another region and also uh 
and also you can uh, share your data across your organization and also you can move your data across the cloud so it can be from your on premise or it can be vice versa as well so uh with that being said uh we understood okay these are uh, uh uh the 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 components which is existing in azure purview which is your uh data map which gets a metadata get a catalog which actually tries to uh understand classify and Uh, label the data and insights is what really understands your data in a complete picture so i think uh, uh before we actually start with the demos i think it's best that we understand that there are few best practices which needs to be followed so which is a single azure purview account for an entire organization it is not really necessary that you have to create your azure purview accounts for your each team in your organization it's only one account is necessary for your entire organization where you can actually assign uh, leaders as well as data owners for separate collections or logical entities of the same and you can also uh, fulfill your compiler's requirements and the only way to suggest having multiple purview accounts is for testing features for example if you want to really have a development account and a production account that's only when you have to create two accounts for it you can protect your sensitive data and you can also consider design requirements of collections and glossary and more so you can look into the uh, best practices in your azure documentation and then uh, let's jump into the demo so i think we have seen much 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 more enough that we have full understanding of what is data what is data governance and we also understood like why we have azure purview in the first place and also we understood like what what azure purview really does okay so with that being said i i really don't want to extend or or keep dragging on these concepts uh, but this is much more necessary for, and right away for us to get start, started with azure purview so give me a second and i would like to take some questions if any and meanwhile i'll take us uh, 30 seconds break for myself so and switch to my azure portal in meanwhile so thank you so if you have any questions try to drop that in your comments i would like to take that as well so uh just give me a second to log in okay so let me share my screen again mm. yes uh can you please add my screen uh yes thank you yep can you sure uh, vivek yes thank you lakshman yep so thank you this is my azure account i guess you have your own so the first place where we have to go is to create your azure purview account so type in your service and you have something called azure purview and you can go ahead and create it so for the demo purposes i have created my demo earlier but uh let's walk around with with that as well so the first thing is go to the resource group uh, have your own resource group if you want and you can give the necessary name and there is something called a capacity unit by which you actually get uh, a build according to it so make sure that you have a quick quick run through on the pricing and strategies to make sure that you don't incur any much more cost on it and then secondly uh, go for the networking so i guess the, these we can go with the defaults and once you have created with everything Uh, i think we can head over to your azure uh, purview account which looks something like this so you have iam policies and networking and so sorry so to so. interrupt you uh, vivek yeah, sure. uh, could you please zoom in a little bit so that uh, people can able to see it yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah sure yes uh, is uh, this better? better yes it seems better now thank yeah. you okay okay great yep so let's head out this is your azure purview account but this uh, an azure purview studio is where you try to do all your necessary operations and stuff so let's go to your azure purview studio which opens something like this okay let's see what we have in azure purview so so in the sense there is something called browse your assets you can manage your glossary there is something called knowledge center and there are some recently items my items what your own and some links to it as well 
So let's start it from one by one. So first thing is to actually get our data into the picture. So as we have seen, this is the complete uh, the the infrastructure of your uh, purview. So let's start with data map. So that's where you bring your data. So data map is where uh, you can have some collections. So collection is where you have some logical entities of creating something. So I have one collection and it has some kind of assets to it. So let's try to create a collection of how it looks. So give a collection name like uh, demo collection two. So what I do is who are the admins? Let myself be the admin of that. That's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to create it. So you create your demo collection. And right now it has some, some nothing, nothing in it. So it's just a logical entity that this collection possesses somewhere. So then what I'm actually going to see is, let's try to go to the view over here. So if you can really see, uh, this is a root collection, which is your purview account. And it has a two collection, which I, one, which I earlier created uh, uh, before that. And second thing is your demo collection too, which I created right now. So your collection is some sort of a logical entities and you can plan your collections based on your, it can be your data uh, uh, clubbing on your region or something like that. Or it can be your team who wants to work in particular collections. So, but let's roll with it. So the second one is once you have created your collection, that's where you have to bring your data source. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put some data in my data collection too. So as I said, there is a lot of, lot of ways you can bring your data in. It can be as your uh, S3, it can be your blob storage, it can be your SQL, uh, it can be your uh, Irwin, it can be Cassandra, it can be BigQuery of your Google or anything or wherever you want to get your data from. So let's go with simple. I'm going to go with a blob storage. So perfectly fine. Uh, or it can be of any Azure services as well. So I'm going with a, 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 a blob storage. So let's try to register it. Mm, okay, so where is the register button? Okay, here it is. So continue. So it's trying to get your, all your uh, storage accounts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over and create my storage account as well. So going to storage, I'm going to create my sto storage account, uh, something like this. So I'm going to put that in my purview uh, resource, which I maintain it for this particular, this one. So purview uh, demo blob. This has been already taken and it's for collection too. It's a very big name. <laughs> Wait, I thought so. Mm. Okay, perfect. collection two. This works, perfect. So let's create a storage account and go ahead with it. Let's go with the default. So it's not a big deal. So I'm just going to drop some file in it. So let, let's give some time for it to create. I, I, I hope so. It does not take much of a time. And once you are actually done creating your storage accounts, which you will be seeing over here for that. So the deployment in the process, so we won't be able to see it, but soon we will be. Yep, yeah, perfect. So data is here. So let me try to do it again. So what was our collection to, right? Let's, let's start from the beginning because it does not update. So I'm going to click continue. I'm going to click Azure. Uh, okay, still it's not available here. So let's try to again do it. Mm, cancel. Let's try to create a data source from from first. I'm going to blob storage. I'm going to click continue. I'm going to scroll down. Since I'm zoomed in, it's a little bit of a uh, thing. I'm going to click uh, my uh, sponsorship as my uh, subscription and uh, Let's select our, okay, it does not have the access to it. So the reason is we have to give access for the purview to actually access this one. So let's head over to our purview collection and then give access for our purview to access this one. So I'm going to add a role assignment and it can be a blob reader. It's simple as that. And who are the members to it? So. I'm going to click a manage identity and I'm going to select a purview account which needs to access it. So once you're done, a review and assign, it should be perfect. I guess so. And it 
Yep, perfect. So we have assigned the rules. So uh, now I guess our data should be accessible over here, or uh, just to make sure that it. Mm, okay, it's still it's not here. I think if I'm not able to scroll it properly or if I'm missing something over here. Okay, let's not worry about it, but still we have something in place to get our uh, storage accounts into picture. So, right. Mm. Central India, this is not, this is our earlier uh, demo. Let's go with it. It shouldn't be a big issue for us, but let's try to refresh and see if we can bring my new oh perfect i didn't actually refresh it so <laughs> that was one thing so let's go with our new uh, thing which i've created so far which is the purview collection 2 i'm going to register it and yep voila we have your new storage account over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let uh, this one get access to our blob storage so how do you really scan this particular uh, data source to get all the necessary details that's where you establish and you scan for it so there is few things which you need to give access to which is our purview system must be able to access a blob storage which we actually done right now so i gave an iam role for it so this is a scan and i'm getting up a scan to to get all the details regarding it and ensure that this is your data map so it does not really access your data it access your data metadata right so let me test the connection and to see that if it if it has the access to it perfect so the connection is successful which means since i have given my purview and access to our data storage it can now access the data so i'm going to continue and this is the scan which i'm going to do right now there is something called scan uh, rule set so by default what it does is uh, 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 Okay, view detail. So it's where it tries to, uh, Azure really has some classification rule in the sense for government related details, it can identify uh, for Argentina, some national identity number, Australia, it also falls for India as well, I guess. So India has a PAN card and other card and it can identify both in our, uh, in our data as well. So these are some classification which actually has some regular expression or something which can easily identify the government related details. For financials, it can be your credit card, debit card details, IFSC code for India and so on so. And base is where your base classification, personal is where your age, date of birth, email address, uh, gender and your phone number and so on so it has in it. And security like common passwords and access keys and so on so and miscellaneous like IP address and so on. You can create your own custom rules if you want to. Let's try to create one custom rule for myself which I have actually done right now. So sensitive in the sense, I want some sensitive details needs to be collected and done. So that's one of the sensitive mappings and classification rules. Now let's try to uh, run a scan on it. I just want to run it once. I don't want to do it frequently for demo purposes, but you can set it as well. So save and run. So what do you think you will be actually seeing, will see under our scan rules once we have scanned it? Actually nothing because we don't have any data in our storage account. So for that, meanwhile, while the scan runs and gives an answer that there is nothing which is available in the storage account, let's head back to the uh, data map where I already have a collection created and there is a storage blob. I'll, I'll show you the storage blob as well. It's not a purview demo blobs and have a container. I just dropped one CSV file in it called data set. So let's assume like this is a collection which is used by my data science team. So I am going to again go and view the details and scan. I don't want to do it scan. Okay, view details. Uh, it has one scans and it had discovered two assets and what are the classified assets? So it's not. So what are the scan name and what were the recent failed scans? Everything is perfect. So how, what was a, a, a classification that we can also apply as well? Let's assume I want to, uh, these are the classification which we are actually seeing in your scan right so which there was some classification i think this is what the, they were actually trying to say but you can create your own own stuff 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own classification rule in the sense if a person is employed, I need to put that as a new category. So my class rule is where uh, uh, I'm going to give a regular expression. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry for that because my light actually switches off if there is no inactivity. So <laughs> I have to do it from time to time. Uh, so yeah. So this is a data pattern where I want to do uh, get some data pattern where if there is no S or something, I need to put that into some for this particular category of my data column of my data. I need to put it. Test the classification rule if it really works. I'm going to drop a file which has actually called self-employed uh, column in it. Yep, so it has one classified columns, so which is perfect, working perfectly fine. Oh, why is <laughs> this is not, I'm not able to click. Oh, this is weird. Okay, let me reduce the size and see if I can click it. Okay, that, that was an issue. Uh, it's, it's not much responsive as you know, Azure uh, websites are not much responsive, but just bear with it. So I guess we got the crux, like I right now can edit a cl class rule and so on and so. And once you're actually done with the class rule, you can establish multiple class classification rules and then you can create your own class classification to it. So I'm creating a new class called new class and even edit it. So it's uh, that's one name which you can give and it has one uh, classification associated rule, which is class rule, right? So who's the owner? I'm the owner who which actually created it. So this is uh, a classification rule which we created. Let's head back to our source and see if the if the scanning is done or not. Scans is one. It's still queued. It takes time. Okay. So in progress is done a full scan. So it will be taking some this one. So meanwhile, I'll head over and show you my previously existing class uh, classification and the scanning which I've done. So which actually we saw about your classification and classification rule. And also we know about your classification scan rule set as well. So now that we are able to create and access the data which is available and it identified there is a particular blob with uh, some, some scan has been done and we identified there is some assets with that. So let's head over over here and uh, see what really uh, has some table view if you want to do or map view, both are fine. And you can register a data source if you want to as well. So let's head back to a second place where now that we have a data in, in map, let's try to understand what type of data and everything over there. So the second step where we go is data catalog. So it has date, two data sources. Correct, because we have two uh, blob storage connections, browse assets. So these are the collections and what it has in between is like a files and so and so. Uh, and then you can browse by the event type. It can be a storage account. It can be a blob storage and so and so. And what are the managed uh, glossary? So uh, this was one of the files which got accessed. So I can even search for it. So. There was one column name called married, which I can really search and you can identify where this particular search was available. So this is uh, uh, the catalog where you can actually go through an entire data source with just uh, a search uh, sort of a thing. And it belongs to this class, uh, class collection and that's perfectly fine. And you can create a glossary term to associate your own business terms as well. So that's where your gl managed glossary comes into picture where you can, you can create a new term. So let's create like I need a business uh, marital term, something uh, just for references. And you can create some attribute and what type of field type that you should have. So this will help you to identify that particular glossaries in your data set as well. So right now it's not much important. Let's move on. And let's head back and see if our, uh, our scanning process is done or not. Usually it takes a lot of time because it needs to actually scan the entire stuff. So scans is one, is it's in progress. So let's, let's leave it so it's not a big deal. And uh, coming to our data insights. So right now uh, we have four source types. So everything is a blob storage 
and one table storage one data lake one azure files because one storage account has all these stuff in it correct so if i only connect my blob storage this is an access if i connect my old storage account i can get an access to a storage table storage and azure files and so on and usually it takes a lot of time to generate it, it, it insights so it was actually generated at 5:30 whereas i actually created this demo at 3:30 it takes a hard to actually get this insights on up and ready so what are the other stuff it it can do uh, by count of csv there are actually one csv file because we only have one source right right now and what the details of it can show you csvs file extensions your your databases and everything and you can actually play and access with it as well so we can create your uh, filters out of it and everything so this is an insights which has been collected from your data where you have applied some classification rules on your data and everything so yep scans are in data map you can create your glossary if you want you can apply your sensitive uh, uh, data if you really have something over it and uh, uh you can have your classification insights so this was created at the uh uh this one so it actually takes 3 to 8 hours to reflect it so since it was created at 330 it might take around a couple of times so probably you can once you actually done everything it does apply everything and you brings out your whole insights in next in next 3 to 8 hours so but yep you can check back it whenever you are ready and for demo purposes let's let's move on and Uh, i think that covers our, uh, our data map and your data collection and your data insights as well but yeah let's try to again get back to our data map and try to see if our uh, new uh, thing is it's done or not so since it's a full scan it will really take some time it's still in progress what if i do a new scan and before that i'll try to upload our data over there so collection 2 is what i have to do i'm going to create a container Mm. I'm going to drop a file. Okay, perfect. So I have dropped it, and it it got uploaded as well. So perfect. So let's try to go and create a new scan. What I'm going to do right now is uh, an incremental scan to make sure that. uh allow data access policies to be assigned to the source as or no that it's your this one and uh, that creates your new scan as well okay this scan is actually completed and let's see what is really found it really doesn't didn't find any uh this one so i'm going to create a okay let's stop this particular scan cancel it close okay i'm going to close it so this let's let me try to create a new scan over here okay this is a new scan which is running so incremental scan ingestion is completed but it does not allow me to do it so that's totally fine so you can create an incremental scan and you can discover some new assets with it but i think this should be canceled before i can create my new scan over there so let's head back so it's not a big issue or you can i can even drop the same file in my another container and you can do it as well so i'm going to here i'm going to drop my second file and see what it can do so i'm going to upload the same file over here or some other file which ever feels convenient mm let's do it and going to upload it as well and perfect so now it's got uploaded and what i'm going to do is i'm going to my uh uh the earlier collection i'm going to run an incremental scan over there so new scan uh let's go to scans and then uh continue all assets under a parent container if the parent is fully or partially checked so it it now has access to these two things and some file 
continue and apply the same rules it needs to apply only once right now do it run and save so the scan scope is full but i think i can uh i just save it as of now so i'm going to edit the scan mm yeah perfect so i think let's run for a scan as well it's not it's not going to hurt us so to define so it can actually create a new scan as well so let's head back if i can access my second uh, data maps collections uh, data so one scan has been done i don't want to edit the source i'll just go over here uh, right sorry so incremental was i'll do a quick incremental scan right now scan has been accepted and let's see how it long it takes but we'll try to wrap up as soon as possible so that's one thing so this is currently queued so perfect so this is how we try to scan and get some insights out of it but i'm not sure if our, our time is sufficient for us to get through wait for our entire scan to get over but meanwhile i'd like to take some questions if there is any so you can drop your questions in the chat so apart from that uh, i think uh, once your scan is ready you'll be able to access your assets and once your assets are ready it will take some time for you to go ahead and get some insights from your data insights it might take 3 to 8 hours for that and once that is done you can establish your glossaries classifications and everything and try to work with the data as well so so i think uh, sorry you can so i think that that sums up the whole process of uh, working with the purview i think it's a good starter for us to get started but if there is any questions uh, you can post me in the chat if not you can uh, ping me in my profile as well so both works for me so uh, i think if we have a couple of minutes we can wait for the scans to get over but if if not it's totally fine uh, we know how it works and we'll be able to get the details in in future so i think it's for you to explore and see how it works as well so with that being said uh, i think that comes to an end of today's session and uh, i think over to you lakshmi on that thank you vivek it was a great session so that uh, people can able to know how to governance their data because this is a data era all okay. things depends upon totally on data where uh, how the data works how the data is calculated how we can able to uh, predict or uh, some uh, do some calculation maths using data it was a great uh, pleasure for us and the appreciate your time and your uh, session uh, on regards to uh, assure for view thank it's you very great and it's very uh, insights a lot of people is able to learn how to uh, manage your on premises and uh, that saas based application and cloud multi cloud data on how to get it easily onto a dashboard so for the insights great yep i hope so, so uh, the users found it insightful and thank you lakshman as well sure and uh, we wait for a few more minutes uh, so that uh, for the any questions then uh, we could be able to wrap up sure sure yep i am open to that so you can drop your questions in chat i'll right now uh, take some questions if there is any so yep meanwhile uh, let's also say try to see the results of the scan as well so though the scan is in the process it actually found us two assets which is one data file which we dropped and a container right so it's two assets and it tries to understand that assets and go with it so right now we have two sources four assets and everything so uh we can get uh and we actually get it so yep since in the process i won't be get to access it but it has discovered so far so this is how we actually try to get your uh this one we only saw about uh, blob storage which is the easiest and the 
a way to start. But if you have any other data source, it can be your SQL Server, it can be your Amazon your AWS S3 bucket, it can be your IBM or Info, Informix or any sort of data files, it can really handle it. And if, if it does not really exist, as I said, you can create your own custom type in your Apache Atlas and you can try to access it with your API calls as well. You can refer to the documentation for more, more on that. But that this sums up on how to create your collections, manage, and get your uh, data on board as well. Sure. So let's go for a few more seconds. Yes. So um, uh, I have some few doubts where uh, I could be able to clarify how, how much hours of time may consumption for a single uh, insights. So yeah, it's actually, uh, uh, it takes a lot of time because it actually needs to scan through your complete uh, data sources and we just saw about one single blob storage and it really took us three hours. So a scanning process grows very incremental as well as a full scan. And if it's actually a new scan, you have to go for a full scan because it's unaware of the data. But once if it has some data in it and you just need to update on that, so it goes for an in incremental scan. So scanning process it itself takes a lot of time. Once your scan process is there, your Azure purview on your backside, on your behind the screens, tries to understand the data and, and bring some insights out of it. So that's where it tries to uh, create your complete holistic overview of how many insights it have and what are the data sources and what type of files and what type of uh, resource sets and what type of glossaries and classification, everything you will be able to get it. So it, it usually takes around uh, three to eight hours to generate a solid insights, but it gets updated on the fly as well. So uh, that initial setup is quite tedious because you are dealing with complete your data infrastructure. But I guess that's the time you have to invest and efforts you have to invest to to bring everything on board. So once we have got our pipelines and all our setup connections ready, whenever the data changes happen, it automatically checks for some incremental data scans and uh, processes the data and uh, giving the insights for us to what happened. Yes, exactly. So uh, since data map actually supports automated data discovery, so it goes for an incremental scan, which you can actually schedule it from time to time. So you can either do a scan in one time or you can do it recurring as well. So whatever you feel so far. And that's how you bring all the data. So for example, if you are from a marketing team who has just injected a new data into in our organization, uh, this purview actually gives a holistic view that this was actually happened and everyone now aware of that, that a particular data has been actually injected into a complete data ecosystem. But of course, that comes with your security and access and permissions. So you don't really have need your developers to know about your marketing data and vice versa, right? So you can even set up your uh, uh, boundaries and roles and permission and accessibility to, to but as a chief data officer or, or someone, you will be actually able to have the complete uh, holistic view of your data ecosystem. Yes, sure. And uh, so there was no, not much of the question at present so that uh, we could wrap. And uh, it was a great session from our end, from your end, so that uh, the people are able to know what actually it is. And most of the people say they even know that this product exists. So it was a very great uh, of the kind of session where uh, people are able to know and uh, get what they are able to and they are able to implement on their application on their own premises, on Perfect. their enterprise-based yep. application. So it was a great pressure for you, uh, for us to be having in your, uh, in our community meetup and I uh, hope we would have a couple of more sessions as I'm coming further. Yeah, I'm so, really looking forward to as well. So thank you for really having me. And yep, so before we actually conclude, so uh, our scan is also completed and probably so, can just so have a quick one. A view of what our uh, assets have are, has been found so far. So we can have, there are two assets and there is, as well. So in the sense, our scan completed and it can now access our test data file as well. So I think that that sums up our whole, uh, this one. So test.csv is a file which you uploaded. Now the asset is now available for us to work with it as well. So you can even directly open that in a Power BI and works on a classification. It has all the schemas and everything. And what are the column names it has and contacts and everything. 
So this is how you can work with your data in, in the whole. So I think we have also seen the complete workflow of a scan as well. So I think that concludes our demo in a perfect way. So thank you for that. Sure. So uh, thanks for uh, your uh, time and valuable uh, time, Vivek. And uh, it's a pleasure for us. So yeah, that wraps up our session, guys. And I uh, hope you are able to learn a lot from Vivek, a data scientist and a Guinness World Record holder. Thank you. That thank you so much. Today. Thank you. Thank you, Vivek. And have a great day. And have a yeah. great day for you all, guys. And uh, see you on the next session. So I am Lakshman with Vivek uh, Raja. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.